Hi, this is Matt Perry with Perry Window Cleaning in Springfield, Ohio, and we're setting up our uh, work van for an onboard tank of water, pure water, to do uh, water-fed pole cleaning. We've had eight years of accumulating tools and traditional equipment in the van, so we've got a lot of work to do. Thought we'd walk you through it step by step, including a few problems we encountered, but they were just minor challenges and we solved them. So hope you enjoy the video. As you can see, we're installing a 125 gallon tank. It came with a two inch female opening. We downsized it to a one inch female garden opening and then to a one inch double male uh, fitting. This then we took to a garden splitter since we're running dual pumps. Then we attached a half inch OD and three eighths inch ID which matches the hoses inside the pump box. By the way, on those fittings, uh, make sure you use plumber's tape the first time. We didn't, and it leaked, so we had to redo it. Just a helpful tip. Well, at this point, I'm all proud. I built that shelf up, got room for my ladders in there, all conveniently stacked in. My brother, the electrician, wired it up with a relay from the engine, so it charges the battery while we drive, but doesn't discharge it while we're using it. So we're set, right? Well, guess what? We can't get the pumps to prime. They won't pull water through. They make the noise, the sounds, the lights, but no water. Well, my son-in-law Googled, and we found out that these are self-priming pumps, but don't have them more than eight inches above your water source. So we have to lower the shelf. 
Once we lowered the shelf, we tried it again. Guess what? Still not priming. So we opened up the uh, pump box, checked the hoses. Some of them were a little loose. We pressed them in together. And once we did that, we got water flow. We're in business. This is a house in Yellow Springs, Ohio, about 20 minutes from Springfield where we live. And this was the first house we did with our new setup. Uh, we have the tucker pole, and apparently it has the old screws in it uh, for the uh, water flow th uh, through the brush. And they're a little large, so my water flow wasn't the greatest. But this house had a tree, and it was very satisfying to be able to wash that window from the outside uh, before we had to crank it open and wash it from the inside. So, uh, so it's great to be able to use the water-fed pole. As you see, there's no room to set a ladder up through that tree. But notice, uh, I'm going to pause it here. Notice where you uh, see the uh, water flow come out. Plenty of water flow, but it's not squirting out very far. We'll go close up here and you can see it. That's where we need the different size screws. And I found out those are obtainable. They have a smaller hole in them. And I think I even have a picture for you here. But uh, once we get those, then uh, we got everything set. There's the brush as it looks now. And here's the screws. The one, the largest one in the middle there, is what we're ordering. So anyway, we. but I wanted to show you that house. We had very good satisfaction. Got to clean that as well. So it's well worth it. And uh, we're pleased and we're looking forward to using it the whole season. You can just get a battery charger to recharge your battery, but if you choose to hook up to the engine with the relay like I did, get someone that knows what they're doing. That's why I got my brother an electrician to do so. Now here's what it looks like uh, on the battery power. Your gauge also shows the uh, power from your battery. And then uh, this shows the power when we turned the ignition on and started the engine. So we can definitely tell that it's charging, even though I have a gauge on my instrument panel in the van. This way I can also know through the uh, pump controller. Through the advice of some on the window cleaning forum uh, at uh, Window Cleaning Resources, I put a small heater in the van for those nights where it drops a little below freezing and just for protection. That way I can use it during the day the next day. All right, it's time for the moving action part of our video. Uh, we're right behind my house here, and uh, this is the fan set up. This is the power cord. Uh, I didn't have to drill any holes to uh, supply that heater, uh, as my fan has a big enough gap in the door. There's where the heater sets, to give you an idea. We've still got to rearrange everything here in the back, so just ignore that. That's not how it's going to be. Although my little giant and uh, work plank uh, will stay in this location. Here's the battery set up. Here's where it comes in from the ignition that we talked about. There's extra wiring here. Uh, that was uh, a good idea of my brother's since I had to move the shelf uh, down over here. I did elevate it about an inch in case of water leakage and also there's wires coming through the bottom of the box. This is the unit that, uh, that he installed, the switch. You can hear a defined click when the ignition goes on or off as it's switching. This we had to turn. It was straight upside down before this pump would prime. We had to twist it out sideways and then it would fill with water 
and uh, and we got the uh, this pump to prime. This was the second one we tried to prime. And then around the back of the van is where we have the uh, the sediment filter, the carbon filter. We've got a shut off here. Uh, these do produce a lot of pressure. This is the uh, piece that you can put in to reduce the pressure down to 45 or less. And we go into the incoming side of the DI tank right here. The pure water then comes out here and I ran it up above the shelves to the tank. Alex and uh, Chris at Window Cleaning Resources were great in getting me fixed up with this and, and answered all my questions before I made the purchase and uh, I wanted to uh, Share that back with them by showing you how and letting you even hear it perhaps. I lay this down before I turn the water on. It has easy instructions on how to calibrate it, which is already done. I just press and hold the up arrow. And if you can read it, it's uh, pumping out at 50. Looks like it's flashing on the camera, but it's actually a solid number. Uh, I don't know how it's coming out on the video, but it, there it is at 50, and I'll be quiet so you can hear the pump. There's 99, the highest it goes. Or you can run it clear down to zero if you like, in which it stopped. There's 50. Now, I'm going to demonstrate here, when you shut off the water at the pole, this is what it's calibrated for. It will actually stop the pump. Shut off. I don't know if you could hear it, but the pump stopped. Every few seconds it tests. It shows a DE on the display. It, it hit a dead end. That would happen also if you have air in the line. You turn your water back on. And the pump is back on as well. Now if you want to check your battery, you tap this, it goes for battery, we're sitting at 12.8 power on the battery. Then it goes back to the flow rate, which is 50. Hold it down a long time to shut it off. So, well it wasn't too long, a few seconds. And uh, that's how easy it is, both pump controllers work the same way, a person can run two poles. And, uh, and we're in business. My wife benefits a lot of times. This is the kitchen window when I get new tools or something new to play with on, in the window cleaning, like my modified pole and new pump box. She gets this window cleaned several times, probably the cleanest window in Springfield, Ohio.